I think panel number four was even better than the main demo. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Hello, YouTubers. This is the Nubifier. On the 21st of October, 2023, we had CitizenCon. Two-day CitizenCon. The show was a set of live panels from Los Angeles. I'm going to be breaking everything down from day one and day two. I'm working on a little backlog today, but check it out. This was the fourth panel, Navigating the Universe. I don't actually know what happened to panel two from the schedule. Maybe CIG vented it out an airlock. Perhaps it was rescheduled. I'm going to track it down for you. But here's what you need to know about panel four. The panel was hosted by Bone Zane. Emily and Simon. We began with a statement that space is big, a UI standard is preserved throughout the company, the new tools are developed and that makes the UI elements and this is done in one place to improve the results and improve the speed that they're made. Star Citizen has an above average level of information needed by the player and Star Citizen's UI is broken down into layers. These are your basic player HUD, the visor HUD, the kiosks, the elevator panel, the readouts on weapons, Moby Glass, ship MFDs and HUD and they acknowledge that the player is blasted by all of these and there's the possibility for overload, which they want to prevent. Simon said that the evolution has been with the game since the start. The evolving UI redesign is the point of this entire panel, a framework to account for the legacy but also be ready for the future. UI is a collaboration with the team that actually is building the game. A system needed to be brainstormed, and once that was identified, they put an illustration up to show the absolute worst level of clutter that a player might see with this new UI. You have been looking at the live demo, there's a compass at the top and there are little marker lines in the player HUD which show where items will be seen. Bone then walked a little bit and there was a new mission objective that popped up and a location objective. As the object went out of the player's view it changed to an edge arrow like what we see in other games and in the space combat. The location had a threat of radiation and the player status showed this at the lower left like we've seen before. As the objective was completed and the pipe was fixed, the level of radiation fell to normal and that changed on the HUD. The next objective pops up, which is to kill an enemy. The player emission indicator lets you know how easy you are to be detected. The player has a passive scanner that works on proximity. The closer you are, the better the data. But the player can also charge a pulse and get more at risk of detection. When the player takes out their weapon, the UI changes to show the new priority. These are your ammo, your grenades, and all of the things you're going to need for combat. Throwing a grenade has its own threat indicator. The NPCs were highlighted. All of this looks like what I've seen in Cyberpunk 2077, which is not a negative comment. If you're going to copy anything, that game is super futuristic and the HUD is worthy of duplication. The new Moby Glass is fantastic. It's fully redesigned and holographic. What they showed off was the UEE Moby from Squadron. There's a PU version, which is going to be a little bit more like a smartphone and it'll have apps. We would then be shown what's coming next over the next couple patches and what they're working on for the future. The map is being completely overhauled. They did a demo where the player was able to walk up to a wall-mounted terminal, the player was able to navigate on the wall-mounted map system, but the most important update was the ability for the player to download that map and then move away from the wall. The onboard scanner will automatically add to the incomplete map. You move, it updates. You scan, it updates more or faster with better detail. This mini map is also part of the Moby Glass. On the larger map in the Moby Glass, you get even more detail. The scan indicates doors that are in a locked state. You can navigate between floors and just like any other game, you can set a marker on the map and then that becomes visible as a waypoint in your HUD. The markers are unlimited and they can carry metadata. They said that we will be able to sell markers on the market. And then of course the audience went nuts because everyone likes selling stuff. The sale of the markers will have its own rating system like Yelp. The dumb waypoint isn't what we need, so you're also able to plot a path and there it's represented in the player's UI on the map. AI pathfinding tech is used by the NPCs, that's the back end that drives the map feature. The path can be blocked by a locked door or a fire, which is handled by the system automatically and updates the path. They sent out a player ping to check the map and then they navigated to the location with the map, but also the waypoint was visible in the player's view. They transitioned to a waiting ship and the map transitioned at the same time. Now on board the Carrick, the Moby Glass has a full representation of all of the floors of the ship highly detailed and seamless. I can see real usefulness for the engineer unfamiliar with all of the ship needing to find a shield generator. They would open the map, set the waypoint and then be running to the location to perform an emergency fix. The real party piece was next though. They simply pulled out of the ship map and it revealed that it was actually the universe map, the star map. We then had more information about how this player map behaves as a star map. Your location is always represented in 3D on the map. 
they pulled even further back to show all of Crusader with a better label engine, no matter where the player is looking, the label will flip to be easy to read. Surface labels are based on the surface, so spinning a world will result in the far side labels being hidden to reduce clutter. Clicking on an object selects it, the player can zoom in and out freely. Cosmetic scaling is what they're calling something that mappers already have a name for, it's called cartographic license. They ended with the promise that there would be no need to zoom into an empty space. There is a hover over cursor that adds information as you drive the cursor over an object. There's a go to last marker button. There's a step back button, which will help us navigate by clicking Microtech, and then we can pan to the destination. But the search dropdown can also be used if you're unfamiliar with the system. Scroll the list, click the feature, and we're transported to the location. We jumped all the way back to the technical deck of the Carrick where we started. They also showed off like a surface map of a planet, and that's it. This panel was full of emotions for me. So many years messing with a garbage space map, and this seems to be exactly what we need. Who knows when it'll be there. I went and enjoyed a mega pint of wine to celebrate. <laughs> the channel is currently sitting at 76,800. And this is important because Deadlift donated a Halsey as a giveaway. That's going to be linked up at the end. It's free to enter. If we get to 78,000, I'm going to be donating a second ship for a total of $700 US. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. If you want to support, please consider sharing the content. That does a lot for me. Please look out for the playlist of all of the breakdowns for CitizenCon. Fly safe.